Hey guys, Coach Victor here from the Thai Boxing Institute of Marvista, California, and in this video we're going to cover how to properly throw a switch kick. A switch kick for a orthodox or right-handed fighter is a left kick. Now, there's two methods of throwing a switch kick. One is stepping, which is more of a Dutch style, European style throwing of the left kick. The second way is switching, right? Skipping. And that's more traditionally done in Muay Thai. We'll cover both of them. Why is it called a switch kick? First thing is because we're switching our stance. This is our orthodox stance, the right-handed stance. When I execute the kick, whether it's stepping or switching, that initial step is a stance switch. Orthodox to southpaw, orthodox to southpaw. I would say that in, in, in all of the, uh, the Muay Thai 101 techniques, I think the switch kick, the left kick, is gonna be the one that requires the most practice. We're dominantly, we're all right-handed, right? Uh, right right foot, right hand. So it's it's not often that we use the left kicks, practice it a little more, right? It's gonna be a bit awkward, a bit unorthodox, but if you get your reps in, you know, your left kick will be indiscernible from your right kick. All right, guys, I'm joined here by Coach Javier of the Thai Box Institute of Marvista, California, and he's gonna help me with the switch kick. Let's start off with the stepping kick. If you watched our Muay Thai 101 video on the rear kick, you'll notice that I break down the kick in three different steps. Step, pivot, turn. Step, pivot, turn, kick, return. The switch kick, that first step, as I mentioned earlier, is to switch our stance, right? So there's gonna be an additional step to that, that sequence, right? Step, pivot, turn off of the rear kick. The left kick is gonna be in a, in a four count, right? Step, kick, back to stance, step. Kick, back to stand. One, two, three, four. Right, rather than step, pivot, turn, it's gonna be step, kick, return, back to southpaw, back to your orthodox stance. Let's see that in real time. That timing is gonna be really important. Before we even begin, I want you guys to, to get that timing down to, to learn how it sounds and how it feels, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Easy in, easy out. All right, and I'll cover what that means when we're done with the, the whole sequence. Like with any, any kicking technique, we want to find a range, right? So you want to find your lead arm touches the pad, right? We're going to take one step back. Okay. Muay Thai footwork 101. I feel like I'm within range. So the first thing is my target's at 12 o'clock and I'm at six o'clock. That first step that I'm gonna take is gonna be towards one o'clock. Now, when I take that step, notice my toes, my knee, and my hip are all aligned, right? So what I'm doing is I'm opening up my, my hips to allow the rotation, the follow through, and the range of motion for the technique. If I step straight, my own hip is gonna inhibit that movement, right? So I'm not gonna be able to, to turn and follow through as much as I'd like to if I were not to step out to one o'clock. Right here. Now, that step, right? Step to one o'clock. My body's going this way, my kick is coming that way, and my intention is to, to decimate anything in that, in that shin's path, right? To, to the point where my body and my leg will meet Theoretically, right? Find your range. One step back. First step, one o'clock. Second step, as I lift my leg, I lock my ankle, point my toes, right? Because I want to kick with the shin. I want to isolate the bone. Furthermore, I don't want to kick and possibly injure myself or my partner, right? The shield, you know, it'll be a little forgiving. On the heavy bags, not quite. So in order for you to prevent any broken toes, always lock your ankle. Point your toes back. Lock your ankle, point your toes back. All right, so I'm here in my stance. Step, step, lift. If you notice, my, if you notice my leg is relaxed as I lift, right? It's not rigid or stiff. Step, lift, kick, 
back to stance. Step, lift, kick, left arm swings back, right? And I'm turning my torso, much like a hook, to generate torque and follow through. When I'm done with the kick, I use that, that momentum from the follow through to recoil myself back into southpaw. And then here, push off, back to stance. One, two, three, four. Look at my shoulder, so I have rotation. It's not so much the hip or the knee turning over, but it's my upper body turning the kick in. It starts at a high arc. <laughs> Step on the ball of your foot, turn your heel. Step. <laughs> Step. The pivot, right, the heel turn is going to help generate torque. It's going to help me follow through, right? Now, these legs are dependent on each other's movement. If I'm turning with this one to follow through on the, on the return of the kick, I'm pivoting back. Pivot in, pivot back. When I pay attention to what now my right leg is doing. <clears throat> also, breathe, right? You breathe at the execution of the strike as the shin is, is sinking into the target. <clears throat> And as always, opposite hand up, when we're done, back to guard, back to our regular stance. Easy. In, in my opinion, in my opinion, that stepping left kick is the easier way to approach the switch kick. Now, I think it's a bit slower, which is useful and helpful for beginners, but what if it's time for us to, to advance in our technique. So now we're going to go over the skip switch kick. Why do we call it skip switch? Look, it's a quick little shuffle to southpaw, kicking, back to stance. Kick, back to stance. I think this is a quicker, faster way of being able to throw the left kick. But I think it involves a little more practice, a little more te technique and a little more dexterity, right? So let's, let's cover that now. Find your range, one step back. Okay. Pay attention to the width of my legs as I switch, All right? It's shoulder width apart. The most common mistake people make is that they widen their stance out way too much, right? So look. Now, the kick is going to be like off, off range, off target, and it's going to be a bit more labored because look at where the left kick is, is coming from versus kicking from this position, which is the appropriate way, right? Shoulder width apart. Understand that why we're doing this is because we're switching stance, right? So everything else applies that we covered earlier, 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock. When I switch, I want to pay attention to where my right leg is going, 1 o'clock. Toes, ankle, knee, hip are all aligned. When I switch, look at my left leg. Back foot's engaged, right? And that's going to help me drive and lift a kick into the target. Once I decide to execute the switch, I have to follow through with the whole sequence, right? And the timing is basically the same, right? It's still four, but it's sped up. One, two, three, four. One. Two, three, four. Right, rather than one, two, three, four, which is slower. Not bad. This is one, two, three, four. A little quicker. So let's break it down again. Um, take it from the top, find your range. One step back when we switch, right? Switch and then we execute. As soon as I feel that the lead leg, the left leg now turn into the rear leg, as soon as I feel that leg go back there. Follow through with the kick, lock your ankle, point your toes, kick, follow through, exhale, ish, on that, on that rotation out, right? We're pivoting back to stance. Easy in, easy out. <coughs> <coughs> Left arm swings back. <coughs> <coughs> Switch kick. Common mistakes uh, is not finding your range and then just stepping in way too deep. If you're going to switch, 
mind the width of your legs, shoulder width apart. Now, I was making a mention of easy in, easy out, right? You have to approach everything slow. It looks quick, but in my head, I'm paying attention to the timing, right? Whether it's the stepping timing, one, two, three, four, or the switch timing, one, two, three, four. Let's break that down. Mira, look. People often just kick and then they hear the sound and think that's the end of the technique and then they rush back in a stance. So this is how it's gonna look. Incorrect, right? Look. You're speeding it. So you're kind of, you're taking away, you're diminishing the power of the kick to, to reset yourself back in the stance. And what's also happening is that you're knocking yourself off balance and your upper body, your torso, is going past your hip line, your center line. You want to always avoid being here, right? Check out, check out my posture, right? Check out my upper body. One, two, three, four, stepping. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four, like easy in, easy out. Don't, don't rush the return. Don't rush anything, all right? But especially, don't rush your return. <laughs> Same thing with the switch. Biggest mistake I see is this. Like, don't rush it. Like, calm, take your time, easy, easy. Sabai, Mira, look. <laughs> easy in, easy out. <laughs> the left kick. Alrighty, y'all, and that is it. If you guys found this video useful and engaging, I'd appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button, hit that bell to be notified when we upload new videos, leave a comment, all these things help us out immensely. Other things that you can do to help us out is add us on Instagram at the Thai Box Institute or check out our merch page, tbimerch.com. And with that in mind, I really appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much for all your support. See you next time. Take care.